Hi, I'm David Stewart. I'm an engineering manager at Intel Corporation in our open source technology center, and we're working to make Xeon the best platform to use if you want to choose Solaris or Open Solaris as your operating system. And a lot of times people choose Solaris because you know it is a very stable operating system. It's really great for your mission critical applications and a lot of enterprise situations. And you know it'd be like uh, you know great having that great mission critical uh, operating system. But think about it is if you have even the best hardware and the best operating system, you know, if you have a weak link in there, it can be a problem. It's be sort of like you have a phenomenal, stable structure like the, the Transamerica Tower in San Francisco. And if you found out that the foundation had, was based on something like paper cups or something like that, you'd go, well, well, that's not very stable. How, you know, how could you really depend on that thing? And in the same way, you can have great Xeon hardware, the Intel Xeon processor, which is a great you know, hardware basis and a great operating system like Solaris, why, you know, you'd have, uh, you know, want to make sure all the different pieces that go into it are also stable. And in fact, device drivers are the one place where, you know, can be sort of a weak link. That's a place, if you think about it, that it comes from a variety of manufacturers, typically hardware manufacturers do their device driver. And sometimes it can be a weak link. And so, you know, is there anything that we can do to strengthen the whole structure by strengthening those device drivers? And in fact, we are doing something like that, both by using a hardware feature and an operating system feature in, in Solaris. And so we want to talk a little bit about that, show you how this works. This is the IOMMU. And the way to think about this is that with your device drivers, you might have a device here of some sort. So let's say it's an add-in card, a, maybe a networking card or, or disk uh, HBA card or something like that. And as data comes into that card, why, you know, we do something, of course, an old technique called direct memory access or DMA to copy that memory that comes into the system into a buffer of some sort in the memory of the computer. Well, that works great, except that these memory copies are done without the CPU being involved, right? That's the whole idea is you don't want to have the, the CPU copying a byte at a time. You want to have set up that, that DMA and let it go, and then the interrupt happens after the copy is complete, right? So, but what happens if the device driver sets it up wrong? What happens if you have a bug in the device driver that does the, the DMA off into some other unexpected part of memory, and then the result could be, you know, the system panics, reboots, maybe it's even silent data corruption, which would be even more horrible. So if you think about it, if you, instead of ha you know, having suffering from the fear that you might have a bug in here that might trip you up when you least expect it, one of the things we do is we use this, what we call the I.O. memory management unit, and this is actually part of our VTD technology, a virtualization technology with directed I.O. And so how we do this is we actually set it up so that um, same thing, the DMA takes place, but then, you know, before we allow that memory uh, copy to take place, we actually do uh, bounds checking with the I.O. MMU. The way that happens is that um, we know that, in fact, what the legal addresses are, and so we use this I.O. MMU to make sure that you know, we don't have to get the CPU involved like, uh, you know, that would be really inefficient, but it does allow us to ensure that those memory copies are all legal. And uh, in fact, the worry, of course, with a lot of times is that we affect performance a lot by doing that. And our performance analysis has fortunately told us that, you know, we've done a lot of work in this area, by the way, to make sure the performance really still goes really well. And so um, you, the good thing is we add all this stability in this really critical area of the system. Uh, but from the common benchmarks and, and well-known workloads that people usually care about to make their, you know, business decisions on, we have you know, negligible performance impact. Um, that's very exciting, and so you get uh, a lot, you know, a ton more additional stability guarantee without having to worry about a big performance hit. So um, I think this is a really gonna, people are going to find this is a great. Uh, um, you know, thing that really makes the Intel Xeon processor and uh, Solaris and Open Solaris a great combination for your mission critical applications. And uh, we'd love to you to get involved with us. We're trying to do this as part of the open source community. And so we'd encourage you to go to opensolaris.org, go to the Intel Platform Project, which is the place where we're gathering together a lot of these open source initiatives. And you can see the code that we've uh, done to, to make this work. And, and you can work uh, with us along with the rest of the open source community to really make Xeon, uh, the Intel Xeon processor, the best platform for running Solaris on.